At the National Museum of Ireland, Decorative Arts and History, Collins Barracks, there is a vast collection of glass, ceramic and silver. Within these collections, there are many interesting vials and bottles in all sorts of shapes and sizes, such as these beautifully cut glass decanters made about 200 years ago by Penrose Glass in Waterford, or this dark green wine bottle that belonged to Dean Swift, the famous poet and author including the much-loved novel Gulliver's Travels. Here are two bottles of castor oil berries bought back from the West Indies by Gunnar Lawrence Lowry of the 3rd Company, 4th Battalion, Royal Artillery, 1839 and are now in the museum's collections. Bottles and vials such as these were essential to keeping whatever is stored inside fresh for longer. Castor oil berries, like the ones in these bottles, were used to treat many complaints ranging from constipation to heartburn. Before modern medicine, people relied on a variety of plants, herbs, minerals and substances that were believed to have healing qualities and could be used to treat a variety of ailments. This woodblock print on paper is called The Gather of Herbs by Kuni Soda and is on display as part of the Albert Bender collection. Here is a bottle containing smelling salts used by Eilish O'Connell, a member of Come On Naman during the 1916 Rising. The bottle still contains liquid. Smelling salts are used to revive people who are feeling faint or may have lost consciousness. Smelling salts are created by mixing of the chemical compound ammonia with water or perfume, which causes a reaction releasing a gas. The activity you are about to do also involves creating a chemical reaction to produce a gas. By mixing vinegar, an acidic substance, with baking soda, which is called a base, the two ingredients react to produce carbon dioxide. This gas occurs naturally in the environment and is what is used to make drinks fizzy. With the help of our assistants, we'll show you how to create an explosive potion using ingredients found around your home. This experiment is all about seeing how different substances affect each other and can make a bit of a mess. It is also very important to note that you carry out this experiment with an adult helper and your potion and ingredients are not to be eaten or consumed. Hi, I'm Brian. And I'm Theon. Today we're going to show you how to make a potion. We're going to add three teaspoons of baking powder. whatever colours you want but we want to just mix them all together and see what we get and finally 
ingredient out first. You've got to mix it up before you put in the last ingredient. So mix it up really well so you really get that colour in. And then you put them in the bowl so you don't make the big mess that I was talking about earlier. Light green and dark green. Bye. Bye. After making your potion, why not have a go at designing a potions bottle? Think about some of the shapes of the bottles in the museum and use your design skills to create a spooky label for your potion. Think about what you might want to call your potion. For a bit of inspiration, here's a recipe for powder for the teeth. This recipe is at least 200 years old and has some very strange sounding ingredients, such as dragon's blood, which is actually a tree resin from the Mediterranean. Dragon's blood, powder of coral, white argyle, rock alum, bowl alumic, a tincture of myrrh, Mastix of each in equal quantity. We also have records for other household cures and ointments containing ingredients such as crab's eyes, plague water and sheep's trotters.